you know, for some reason, like, even though, even though you, you even though, you know, you, you the walk is, you know, you got to stay away from, um, you know, you got to stay away from the rap music and other stuff. And for some reason, you know, that, like, like I, I, I like hip hop, you know, <laughs> like I like hip hop and, you know, and I found myself, I was still was going back, listening to the same music that, you know, I, I used to listen to. But, you know, for some reason, it never made me feel good. It never made me feel good listening to, 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 to this music. And then uh, until, like, you know, my wife started, you know, she started listening to, you know, other music. And I'm like, and she started listening to other rap music. Like, they rapping and they rapping um, Christian. Like, you know, um, like Lecrae. And, you know, there's other, other like, then I start I started gravitating to that. You know, I start gravitating that I had to, I had to let, I had to let that past go. Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godet and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Welcome to the Call by God podcast, a podcast where we share personal stories of faith and discuss the Bible's teaching on salvation. I'm your host, Nixon, and I'm here with Sister Adney Godin, and we are honored to share these powerful stories with you. Today, as we have a special guest, Genio Beaubois, who will be sharing his testimony of how he came to know Christ as his Lord and Savior. Genio will discuss his struggle before finding salvation and his faith's impact on his life since then. Junior testimony will remind us that no matter our past, God's love and grace are always available to them who seek him. It will also serve as a reminder that salvation is not just about getting into heaven, but also about the transformation that occurs in our hearts and lives when we accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. So join us and let us listen to Junior Powerful Story Testimony. Brother Junior, man, how you doing, my brother? Doing, doing great. Happy to be here. How you doing, Brother Junior? Great. Happy to be here. Adney, I'll, you know, Adney, um, I was talking to him before pre-show and I was like, man, we were talking like this has been a long time coming. And, and I just thank God for you for uh, taking heed to the call. I know due to your schedule um, that you wasn't able to get on here sooner, but I'm thankful to God that he has you on. So so just think about this episode or this podcast as a, as a virtual uh, fellowship hall, Adney. You, Adney, you know, every guest we have on, we want them to feel relaxed and comfortable like we're in a fellowship hall. So so are you you excited to share your story, uh, uh, Brother Junior? Um, yes, of course. I'm very excited to share my story because I want my story to inspire someone to get closer to Christ. I just Amen. want the kingdom to grow within my story. Amen. I, I like that. You know, I, I don't think I've ever known the the origin or the genesis of your story before you got saved. So kind of like walk us through your history. Like um, tell us a little background history about yourself. Um, I was born in Haiti and port au And um. And it started out when we was in Haiti because um, there was a lot of stuff that was going on when I was growing up as a child. And my mom was, I was kept, I kept on getting sick. She didn't know why. And, you know, there was more to the story than she ended up finding Christ. And when she find Christ, because I was her first child and she didn't want to lose me. So she ended up, um, you know, giving herself over to Christ. Then, then after that, I always been in the, and I always been in the Christian, in the Christian faith. But with a praying mother. So you always been in a Christian faith with a praying mother, and and I guess Adney probably could could um more um have a dialogue about be, the upbringing of Haiti, because I know when a person is brought up in Haiti compared to when they transition to the United States, I know it's a total different ball game. So that's why I kind of like want to hear your upbringing, because you know just like you and just like Adney, we both have some kind of island background in us. We all have some kind of Haitian descent background in us. And I know for me, and um, and, and again, and I'm saying this because I, I want to hear your part of the story. When I brought up, when I was brought up in a household, uh, my mom, she was more like a religious woman. So we were taught more about the, uh, being more like Catholic, uh, praying to Mary. And also uh, the flip side to that, we were also taught about the Catholic background, but also we was also taught about Buddhism, you know, being um, voodoo. 
So when you talk about the, those, e, those are all like two different worlds. So those were the type of things that um, I was exposed to um, as a young kid. So kind of like share the dynamics, whether or not your mom was uh, upbringing in a Catholic background or, or um, a different Christian origin. Talk about that a little bit. It, it, it always been Christian. Christian. Uh, from what I know, it always been Christian. From what I know, um, the um, be, before then, before then, I know she was she was like in the world of you know of other stuff, like you know, like like you said, voodoo and other stuff. But when you when you find when you find you have your first child is getting sick, um, coming up with all type of stuff, there's no explanation for it. She 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 had to do a flip, like you know, it's not working. What I'm doing is not working. So that's why she went to the um she went go looking for um there was I think there was a in the in the where we were staying at there was this lady that helped her that took her to the church and that's when she had found Christ. So she she always told me this that it's because of her it's because of me that 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 she found Christ. She found Christ. How old were you? So when your mother uh, submitted to Jesus Christ, how old were you? And the reason why I'm asking is because. I'm trying to help maybe someone out there that is young, that's probably contemplating knowing Christ, because it's amazing to me that you had awareness. So I want to know uh, how old were you when your mother came to the knowledge of the of, of the truth in Jesus Christ? And when did that start to kind of like tug your heart in terms of, man, I want to know Jesus Christ too. Like, did you see God or the glory of God in your mother to make you think about your ways or was it, I always say this to my guests or, or was it uh hell that kind of like scare you or, or heaven? <laughs> Cause you know, sometimes people hear heaven, man, everybody want to go to heaven. When you talk, when you talk about hell, the hot place, the barbecue, folks be like, man, I don't want to go to hell. So I want to go to heaven. So kind of like talk about that. These experience. stories, the story that she told me, cause I was, I was a baby. I don't really have a recognition of things like that. I just, I was a baby. I was a small baby. Back then, so I don't. I, all I remember is us. Go, I, I always been going to church. So these are the things that she tell it. She told me. At what age though? Well, like, do you remember? Like, were you like? A, oh, with the age one or two. And you still remember that? That's when. That's that. I don't remember. She told me. About oh, this. as you when you got My when you got told older, she told you. As I'm growing up, she always told me. She always told me. She always embedded that seed in in me. Like you can't be like others. You special. You know. You can't see what other people do in the world. You special. Wow, wow, that's that's very interesting. So when did when did at, at that age when did you start to get awareness of Jesus? Because I know at that point you're not saved. So when did things start to click to you and start to make sense? Like life started to make sense for you. I mean, you you know, like when you always going to church, that's all you know. So ever since I was well, ever since I was a small kid to to I start, you know. Like probably well, how old I was probably was like, because I know when we came here, we, I came here when I was seven. I came here from Haiti when I was seven. Same concept. We continue going to church. So 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 I I have a praying mother, and I know of God. I know who God is, but it's you know you got to take the time for you to find Him on your own. And then it's later on in life. It's later on in life. I probably was. I probably because you know you know when you come from a house of of, of praying. Of this, of this, there's gonna be some rebellions in you, you know. You go, <laughs> you gonna want to see like what is out there, what's going on out there, and, 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 and you know, as you know, as I as I was as I was growing up, going to school, like like for some reason, even though I was a kid, I always knew when something was wrong, like it was wrong from doing that because you know I was up, grew up in the church, so I know right from wrong. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. But you still have that rebellious in you. So, um, I believe when I was, I think I was like ten or thirteen, was going to this Haitian church, and that was the first time I got baptized. I think I was ten or eleven. I was because the Haitian church. It was, I think, the name of the church was Pastor Joseph. It was like in little that little Haiti area, that Winwood area. That was the first time I got um, I, I got baptized. But you know, again, you say like everybody get baptized, you get baptized, but. It still don't click because yeah. you're still a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yep. that's true. <laughs> and you still want to know what is out there, like what's going on right. out there. Then, then continue growing up till you know I I, I met I, I met my wife. I met my wife in high school, mm. and she used to always you know talk about God. She's always be telling me about God and stuff. 
and, and you know, again, I come from a, a house of praying, uh, praying women. Right, right. And and and, and you know, and then afterwards, we um, you know, afterwards, we, you know, we got together. She always talk about God. I always talk about God. No, God is start de- building that fear of God in right. me. And you know, the, the 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 second time I got baptized is before we got married at Brother Daniel at Hope Church of Christ. Amen. Yeah. So so that's that's when that's when the you know I really really said okay let me start taking this serious you know is is it's time to start being my word start being and praying you know do what I gotta do yeah because you know it's bigger than me God have a calling for my for my life yeah and, and junior junior I'm I'm glad that you uh, mentioned your experience when you uh, first got baptized. But truth be told, if you come from a Haitian background, you we all got baptized. <laughs> we all got yeah, yeah, but yeah. not it was a sprinkle <laughs> or or going to church going yeah. to Joseph Church in yeah. Little Haiti, because yeah. that's that's yeah. why our parents yeah, yeah. that's why our parents uh migrated to. They migrated to Little Haiti. And I know you you mentioned about your wife. So I always liken to when somebody come to Christ, I always look at it like it's like a marriage. Cause I I know you and your wife, y'all been married for years. So the second time you got baptized, what clicked for you? Was it a sense of maturity or is that you, is, was it something tragic that happened in your life? And you say, you know what? I got to start taking this stuff more seriously because I don't want to go to the barbecue or what was the defining moment that kind of like said, you know what? I'm tired. I submit here. My Lord send me because everybody, I say every, almost everybody that I've, spoken to that had their aha moment, their wow moment, they either had a, an experience. It may not be a supernatural experience, but it may be like, you know what, I'm just, I was just tired of just being sick and tired. And I'm just, I just want to walk and I just want to serve the Lord. How did you feel the second time go around when you got baptized? The second time I got, got baptized, I felt like, you know, like, I had a decision to make, you know, like, like, this is my decision. Like, you know what? I'm going to take this walk serious. I'm going to stop playing. I'm going to, you know, stop entertaining. What, 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 what's going on out there? You know, cause there's a lot of foolery that's going on out there. You know, I'm going to start, you know, take it serious. This is me making the decision right now. Yes. I'm, I want to get baptized. Yeah. And, and again, that, that's why I say I'm, I'm glad that you uh, uh, mentioned that. Cause I, I want people to understand that like, this is not a joke. This is not, you don't just get baptized and play church because there's a difference between going to church and being the church. Cause people could go to church all the time. They could go to church on a Wednesday. They could go to church on a Sunday, but the, the reality is, are you going to be the church seven days a week? Are you going to be a disciple for Christ? Right? So I mentioned that because when a person gets saved, um, there's some trials and some tribulations that you got to endure. You will get tried. You will. So can you share uh, uh, an experience that you probably went through or have experienced um, that kind of like gave you a closer relationship with God? Because, you know, sometimes people experience God in a different way. You know, sometimes God have to test us. He have to pull us to a slew of trials and tribulations. Some people lack faith and that sometimes those experiences either pull us away from God and sometimes those experiences either draw us closer to God. You know, I had a, a lot of testimonies where I could say that, wow, God, I know that you're with me. So can you share a, a, a testimony or a moment in this, after your second baptism or an experience that you had that made you realize like, wow, God is with me. And I know that he's with me all the way to the end. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless.
Um, yeah, it's it's is um, you know, for some reason, like even though even though you, you even though you know you the walk is you know you gotta stay away from um you know you gotta stay away from the rap music and other stuff. And for some reason, you know that like like I I, I like hip hop, you know, <laughs> like I like hip hop, and you know. And I found myself, I was still was going back listening to the same music that, you know, I, I used to listen to. But, you know, for some reason, it never made me feel good. It never made me feel good listening to, 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 to this music. And then uh, until, like, you know, my wife started, you know, she started listening to, you know, other music. And I'm like, and she started listening to other rap music. Like, they rapping and they rapping um, Christian. Like, you know, um, like Lecrae. And, you know, there's other, other like, then I start I start gravitating to that. You know, I started gravitating that I had to, I had to let, I had to let that past go, <laughs> let that past go. Of, you know, of those music, because you know, I literally those music is my whole entire high from elementary to high school. You know, so it's hard for you to let that old you go. So, so I, I found myself now listening to more, more church music, church rap, and it's just, it's just been a blessing since I, I made, I made the switch, and I know God was working through me. I know God was working through me to 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 to, to let that because the the music they say subliminal stuff you don't know what they say man. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's yeah. facts. Yeah. That's so. facts. I I thank you for your transparency about the music thing, and I think this is what this platform is all about. Because you see how you said that you you struggle with the rap music that industry, and people don't know the the spiritual dynamics or the spiritual effects that those type of music may have on your soul and not even, even your household. Cause when I got saved, um, junior many, many years ago, I had a lot of rap CDs and I remember I, I heard a small, still voice from the Lord and said, Nick, you got to get rid of that stuff. And especially like, like, um, again, like I said, you came from a Haitian background, you know, us Haitians, I, you know, and us Haitians, we know a thing or two about spiritual warfare about voodoo, right? So it's like, you got to be careful the spirits that you're entertaining, you know? So when you talk about that type of music, I used to listen to those type of music too. And the small still voice of like, Nick, get rid of all that music. And it was, like you said, Junior, it was very hard to get rid of that. It was very hard. So it might probably be someone on here, like listening and be like, man, you know what? I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm still listening to that worldly music. And, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to, purge myself out of that so it's easier said than done right because you said you've been listening to this since you was like in young and so what what is like how did you get out of it i mean because this is a real show right and i have a real audience so if i got a young kid that's in high school or even in college and saying like man this dude just gave up rap music just like that i want to know how you did it <laughs> how did you do it so could you kind of like walk us through that process like how did you do it I know you talked about it a little bit, but could you go like a little bit more in it, detail? It, it really started gradually. Gradually started listening to um to, to K Love here and there. And then and, and, and then I was like, this music kind of slow, you know. Then 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 then, 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 then I had my wife <laughs> and she was like, no, nah, it's Lecrae. I'm like, wow. And you know, I fell in love with his music. I fell in love with his music about God, how 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 you know how you talk about God and he talk about the real stuff that we going through as a black as black people also in the United States. So, you know, I I I fell in love with his music also. Yeah, you know, the way he worshiped God and stuff. Hey, so so mm-hmm. so y'all y'all heard it. Y'all heard it from uh Brother Junior now. So he really trying to tell you get yourself a godly wife. A godly <laughs> wife <laughs> will set yeah, you yeah, in yeah. order, right? <laughs> sex, sex, sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, keep you in line. Yeah, keep, keep you in line. line. <laughs> so but the way that I got rid of uh my uh worldly rap music, it was through fasting and praying. So, um, you know, obviously you shared with us one way that if you're married and you have your other spouse that has this godly character, you see that you can see the glow and the glory of God on her. Obviously, that's going to bring some kind of conviction. But for me at that time, many, many years ago, I was single. So when God told me, like, hey, get rid of that, I had to go on a fast. So I fast, I prayed and I got rid of that because I know that it wasn't doing it wasn't doing good for uh, my flesh, my soul. It wasn't good for my soul. Cause like it's like, how can you expect God's blessings, right? You listen to godly music and all, you're feeling good, you're feeling joyful, 
And then you have another music that's tearing stuff down. They tearing women down. Yeah. They tearing our community. They talk about violence. They talk about money. That's such a contradiction, right? That's that's like that's like a yin lang, black or white. Like what is it? You know what I mean? So in closing, and, and I, I enjoy your transparency um, that you shared with us uh, thus far about your call, because I know everybody's calling that God has is very unique. It's very unique. Uh, people don't have to have a crazy story like I was just a drug dealer. I was this and that. The reality is that God calls people. God calls people into the body of Christ every single day. And the devil, it's the devil that's trying to pull people away from God, but God is, is so sovereign. He's so patient. He's trying to draw people closer to him. So in closing, I, I, I want to say, man, um, what do you want to be remembered for when God called you home on a, from a spiritual level? So when, when God called junior home, he said, junior, my son, well done. What do you want people to remember you for from a spiritual standpoint when you go back home? And I mean to heaven. Um, yeah, um, I want to be remembered as the person that always, you know, good advice about God, will pray for a friend, and just would be there in the bad times. I remember that guy. I'm going to be that guy. God tell me, you know, you did a good job. You know, you you was more for the people, <laughs> yeah. helping people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hey man, I'm I'm glad you shared that too, man. And I know you're you're a wonderful uh husband uh to your wife, and I'm sure you're a wonderful father to your son. And I'm sure your son gonna mimic those same characteristics that he see in you. And this is why we need more uh godly men and godly fathers and godly husbands in the household. Because when you got a, a godly father and a godly um a husband in the household, they, you know, it, it's the, the communities are better. And, and I say that because early on, you mentioned how you had a praying mother. So kudos to your mother, shout out to your mother. But now God has put that dynamic, that family dynamic together in you, you and your wife. He had put you guys together. So now you, you, both of you guys could be unified. And now your son may see you and your wife, you know, come together in prayer. So as he aged, he can say, you know what? I had a praying father. And I had a praying mother, so I am the way I am by the grace of God, but I thank God for my mom and my dad. So I like how you shouted out your mother. And that also showed me too, Adney, and I know you say you didn't have much to say. Um, I like how Junior pointed out his mother that parents make a difference. I'm surprised you didn't catch that, Adney. Parents make a difference. If you got a, a parent that's, that's carrying on, you know, carrying on in an ungodly way, chances are um, that child may be like that. But if you have a mother or a father that's praying and on their knees and praying on behalf of their child, uh, you may experience a junior, uh, a godly man or, or a godly woman. Any closing things you want to say, Adney, before we go? Thank you so much for joining the podcast today, Julie. I'm sorry, I normally have questions, but I don't know. Your story was just different. It, it, it honestly explained itself. There was no needing to add anything extra. So I thank you for your transparency. And, um, and I'm grateful and thankful for the person that you are. You know, as far as a brother in Christ, just continue doing what you're doing and allow God to use you. Thank brother. you. Let him get the glory. Amen. All right. Thank you for tuning in to the Call by God podcast today. We hope that you have been inspired by, I want to call him JB's testimony, and that it helped to deepen your understanding of salvation. We want to remind you that salvation is a gift, a free gift from God offered to all through faith in Jesus Christ. If you haven't yet accepted this gift, we encourage you to take some time to reflect on your relationship with God and consider what it would mean to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also, Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you.
Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day. By believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized, you will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You've heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.